Chapter 8 A London Cab Horse I liked my new master, Jerry Barker. He knew a lot about horses, and he was always kind to me. His wife was called Polly, and he had a son called Harry and a daughter called Dolly. Harry was twelve, and he sometimes helped his father with a cab. Dolly was eight. Jerry had another horse called Captain. He was tall and white. On my second day at Jerry's stable, Polly, Dolly and Harry came to see me. Dolly gave me an apple. What shall we call the new horse, father? Dolly asked. He must have a name. I already had a name, but I was not able to tell her that. The old horse was called Jack, said Jerry. That's a good name. Let's call him Jack. It's a very good name, said Polly. What do you think, Jack? Of course, I was not able to answer her. Captain pulled Jerry's cab in the mornings, and I pulled it in the afternoons. Luckily, Jerry didn't make us wear a bearing rein. On my first afternoon, Jerry hitched me to the cab and drove me to the cab stand. This was where all the cabs waited for customers. We stood in a line and waited for our turn. While we waited, other cab drivers came to see me. Some of them laughed at Jerry. A black horse, Jerry. That's not very cheerful, said one man. Then the oldest driver came up. His name was Grant. He wore a long grey coat and a grey hat. He looked at me very carefully and said, He's a good one, Jerry. You will be very happy with him. Life in London was very different from life in the countryside. There were always crowds of people everywhere, and carts and carriages and lots of noise. But Jerry helped me to learn about being a cab horse. I wanted to work hard and to please him. Jerry never used his whip on me. He and Harry brushed Captain and me every day and gave us lots of food and water. One afternoon, when we were waiting for our first job, two young men rushed out of a nearby inn. One of them called to Jerry. Cabby! Cabby! We're late! We want to go to Victoria Station, cried the other man. Our train leaves at one o'clock. If you go as fast as you can, we will give you an extra shilling. Whip your horse to make him go faster. Jerry looked at the men. I will take you to Victoria Station, he said quietly. But we will go at our usual speed. It's cruel to whip a horse and it's dangerous to drive fast. The cab behind us belonged to a man called Larry. I'll take you for an extra shilling, he said to the young men. Come on, get in. Larry drove off at a fast pace and whipped his poor horse as he went. Jerry sighed and patted my neck. Those young men annoy me, he said. They are rude and thoughtless. I won't whip my horses. I want you to be fit and happy in your work, Jack. Later that afternoon, we were waiting at the cab stand when a young man came towards us. He was carrying a large suitcase. Suddenly, the man slipped on a piece of orange peel and fell to the ground. Jerry ran to help him. He took him into a shop. The man sat down until he felt better. When he came out of the shop, the young man limped across to us with his suitcase. You've been very kind to me, he said to Jerry, but now I'm late. I must catch the three o'clock train from Waterloo Station. It's very important. I am going to visit a sick relative. Jerry felt sorry for the young man. Don't worry, he said. My horse and I will do our best to get you to the station by three o'clock. 
It was the middle of the afternoon, and the roads were very busy. But Jerry and I knew a quick way, and we both wanted to help this man. As we trotted up to Waterloo Station, I saw that the big station clock said eight minutes to three. Jerry helped the man out of the cab with his suitcase. Thank you very much, said the man, and thank you, horse. He stroked my nose gently. Let me give you some extra money. I don't want it, Jerry replied. I was glad to help you, and that's enough for me. Now go and catch your train, sir. When we got back to the cab stand, one of the other drivers called out, Jack looked like a racehorse, Jerry. You went so fast. How much did the man pay you? The gentleman wanted to give me some extra money, said Jerry, but I didn't take it. Jack and I wanted to help him, because he was polite. That's how we like to behave, isn't it, Jack?'